Hey, what's up guys? John here. Starwood Capital owns 170,000 homes. Blackstone, founder of Invitation Homes, they acquired 90,000 homes during the great financial crisis and BlackRock. They're getting ready to acquire tons of paper from regional banks for uh, loans on residential and commercial property. They're getting ready to acquire these assets, but I'm gonna show you something that they're doing behind the scenes that's gonna completely reshape the entire US housing market. And they're working together like this. It's gonna be crazy. And it's gonna be a huge opportunity if you're thinking about investing in real estate, because nobody is talking about this. Nobody's talking about it, but it's right in front of us and it's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be a bigger buying opportunity than buying in 2010. I'm gonna break it down for you. Hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate other people about what's really going on in the housing market and the US economy. And if you wanna fix your credit, you wanna position yourself for the greatest wealth transfer of all time, which we're in right now, there's no denying it. It started in 2020 and it started ramping up. Where we are right now is nothing compared to where we're gonna be in 2024 and 2025. This rug pull on the middle class is just getting started. But if you want to fix your credit, you wanna put yourself in a position to where you can level up you can level up. Time's running out to get rich. You're gonna need great credit. We'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, one negative item can send a report for upwards of seven years. One late payment can drop your score upwards of 180 points, preventing you from getting financing, good financing. So don't let that get in the way of your future. Go to greatcreditfast.com, see how we can help you. Take a look at this. So this report warns of a real estate climate bubble, right? A real estate climate bubble. They say that a report went out by First Street Foundation, a nonprofit that analyzes climate risk, warns the national real estate market has not adequately priced the cost of climate into its valuation and a growing climate bubble that is similar to past bubbles in the real estate market is just starting to get to be recognized. Well, it's not because I've been talking about this for a while. In fact, I read this book nearly two years ago talking about, it's, it's really fascinating because the CEO of Carlisle, David Rubenstein, he interviews maybe a dozen and a half, two dozen billionaires talking about how are they changing their business models because of climate. When some of these people are in private equity, some are in real estate, some are in different uh, niches and industries, but yet he asked them all the same exact question. But for the people that are in real estate, like Sam Zell in this book, he asked him, all these different questions. And why would they be presenting these questions unless they are getting ready to do a complete overhaul of the US economy? And that is what's about to happen. A complete overhaul of the US real estate market is gonna be done so in the name, in the name of this climate bubble. That's what's ultimately gonna happen here. So think about all of these prime properties in South Florida. Think of them all in Louisiana. Think of them in uh, my, you know, Malibu and all up and down the coast. All the prime coastal properties are gonna to start to see huge, huge insurance increases. Any area near wildfires, any area near uh, any type of hazard or risk, any area that has had issues in the past, they're gonna start getting massive, massive increases. So look at this. But because of increase, and this is also gonna be presenting the opportunity for them, because if you think about it, it's fascinating. Like look, mortgage rates today, 8.246% if you have the average credit score in America, which is a 698, right? So 8.246%, let's say you have a great loan officer. They're able to get you a loan, uh, you know, let's call it 8.1%, right? 8.1% interest rate, 30 year fixed, you have 6% down, which is the average down payment for a first time home buyer. Right, so that's $600,000 purchase price, which in South Florida, <laughs> that, that's basically where the market's at right now. The average monthly payment, $4,970. Now this is if you have $100 a month, $100 a month insurance. You're not getting $100 a month insurance in South Florida. In fact, you are probably looking somewhere, look, the average cost is $5,000. This is in Miami, right? $5,000, so about $500 a month, uh, for, or about $400 a month. For insurance, so about four times what they are calculating here. But for context, this is what you would need to make to be able to afford that. Comfortably about $300,000 a year. You have to basically be a tech CEO, right? You'd have to be a high level, high level CEO or a very well paid employee, uh, more likely as an executive to make $300,000 a year. So if you're making, let's say $200,000 a year, $200,000 a year, you are the, com the home you could comfortably afford with today's rates is about $410,000, $429,000. But if you went to $600,000, you're basically walking into being house poor, right? With $200,000 annual income. 
Now imagine you're a lender and you're looking to you know, make loans. That's what you do. That's how you make money. Would you lend to people in areas in which their insurance rates are going to continue to rise every single year? Probably not, right? You probably would be very, very conservative on the, those loans because it is going to change the qualifications of the borrower being able to afford those monthly payments. So you could lend to somebody with, let's say, a 30 or 32% debt to income ratio. They buy this property and every single year, insurance is going up, utilities are going up, and they are, you know, they're less and less able to make those payments. So what would you start to do? You'd become extremely conservative. That's what you would do. Or you would stop lending in general in that market. Now, it kind of reminds me of a, a story that Glenn Kelman, the CEO of Redfin, put out about two years ago when he said that what he predicts in South Florida and a lot of these markets is that actuaries, lenders, um, insurance companies, they're going to stop doing business in Florida. They're going to stop doing business in California. In some of these prime markets, they're just going to stop. And so the big question is, if they stop lending and they stop issuing these insurance policies at the same capacity they were doing in the past, what's ultimately going to happen? With today's high mortgage rates, there's going to be a smaller pool of potential buyers that are going to want, want to walk in there and self-insure these properties. Now, what does it mean to self-insure? It means that you essentially buy the property and you take all responsibility of any damage. However, you can only generally self-insure a property if you're paying all cash. Right? if you're paying all cash. Because when a lender wants to lend money on a property, he's lending it based on you having insurance policy protecting the asset in which he's lending on. So if you can't get insurance, he's not gonna give the loan, or she's not gonna give the loan, that bank's not gonna give the loan. That's what's ultimately gonna be happening. We're gonna be watching this situation continue to get worse. They go on to say something very fascinating. Nationwide, approximately 6.8 million properties have already been hit by increasing insurance rates, cancel policies, and the realization of property values devaluations due to the increased cost of ownership. About 39 million properties are overvalued and face similar insurance-related corrections. I mean, that's nearly a third of all properties in America. Property values could drop as little as a dollar to a full devaluation right? I mean, this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable because if, if you look at what's going on behind the scenes here, they are saying, like here, in the limited home insurance options in California's major carriers pull back, is what you're going to start to see here is at the same time, utility bills are going to continue to rise. And as gas prices continue to rise, I mean, now gas prices are near $100 a barrel. It's unbelievable because in October of 2022, Joe Biden and the White House administration or White House came out and said that they will only restock our reserves if they can buy oil for between $67 and $72 per barrel. Now, there were two times after that statement in which they could have restocked reserves and made a big buy, but they did not. And that was inside of their striking price. They did not. So what does that mean? It means very likely that they're not that motivated to restock our oil reserves. And so oil prices will continue to rise. As oil prices continue to rise, insurance will continue to naturally rise because it's going to be more expensive for them to replace properties in the event of fire, uh, flood, any type of damage because they have to ship, distribute, and move lumber and materials at a higher price. Because if you think about it, shipping distribution, uh, whether it be on trains, whether it be on trucks, whether it be on planes, if it costs more to get from point A to point B, they're pushing that cost on to the insurance companies. They're going to be paying more, meaning everyone's going to be paying more, right? So it's very simple. Inflation is going to go up, insurance is going to go up, utilities going to go up, and, sh and mortgage rates at the same exact time will likely stay elevated for longer. I think we can all agree that in the short term, mortgage rates are not going to go from 8% to 5%. It's very likely they're going to continue to stay right around here for the foreseeable near future, potentially even rise even further. So big problems coming to the housing market, big problems coming uh, in the name of this big bubble that they say. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a huge opportunity. And I think that's why Blackstone just raised a $30 billion, $400 million real estate fund. Um, Starwood Capital owns 170,000 single family homes. They're getting ready to, to raise a distress fund. And you have BlackRock. Right? All these companies, all of them are looking at the state of the U.S. consumer struggling. They're sitting on a mountain of debt. And they're, they're not seeing where things are really at. Inflation's through the roof and consumers are being pushed against the wall. So what's gonna happen? Everything's gonna get more expensive and people are gonna start defaulting left, right, and center on the housing market. And it's not gonna take much. There's only 660,000 homes actively on the market. If you just increase that supply by 100,000, 200,000 homes, which isn't much, you're gonna start to see 
home prices soften more and more and more. Not to mention that you have 1.8 million homes under construction in America right now. Big problems coming, big opportunities, huge opportunities coming for real estate, massive. I think fortunes will be made if they play their hand right the next couple of years in the real estate market if they're really making smart, well-informed, forward-thinking decisions based on what's really going on in the economy, not based on what they wanna go on, right? A lot of realtors and people will say, oh no, it's a great time to buy. When mortgage rates drop, you'll be able to refinance. But they're not looking at what's going on. They just tell you some elementary one-liner that doesn't really create much value. You wanna look at what's going on and make forward-thinking decisions based on those facts and you'll be able to win long-term. So massive opportunities coming. Drop below, hit the like button, add me on IG. And if you, again, if you wanna fix your credit, you wanna position yourself for the greatest real estate wealth transfer of all time, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, if you have any negative items, go to greatcreditfast.com. If you just don't know why your credit score is not increasing, maybe you're in the 500s, 600s, low 700s, it's been sitting there for a while, you're making all of your payments, you don't understand what's going on, go to greatcreditfast.com. Maybe there's something that you're not aware of on your credit report, and we can get down to the bottom of it and see how we can help you. So go to greatcreditfast.com, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.